What's up creators, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to my channel. And if we're just meeting in this channel, I do tutorials for video and photo editing and some vlogs mixed in there. So if you like those type of things, stick around, see what it's all about and maybe you'd like to subscribe at the end. Okay, today we're turning to a series called Editing Your Photos, where you guys submit your photos for me to edit and create a video about them. Now, in order to participate in this dynamic, you have to go to my other channel, the Spanish channel, and join the channel membership from level two or superior for you to get access to the email account where you can send me or submit your photos for me to edit. Now, it has to be in the other one because in this one, I haven't quite reached the threshold to apply for the monetization on YouTube. Therefore, I can't do channel memberships and also I can't monetize any of my videos and put ads on them. So basically I'm working for free right now. But if you'd like to participate, just go to Tony Fuentes without Tony Fuentes Inc to the original channels and just join the channel membership. Okay, today the brave person who sent in their photos is Mariano Dominguez from Barcelona and he sent me two nice photos. Here we can see them. So the first one is the raw photo of this Audi Q3 here with some olives in the back, very old olive trees. And this one is very nice. It's shot with a Canon 77D with an 18 to 35 millimeter from Sigma 1.8 aperture. Now I highly recommend that lens for anyone who's shooting in crop sensor, whether it be from Canon or with Sony, that lens, a 1.8 aperture in a zoom lens is just out of this world. So if you're shooting Canon, Sony, APS-C sensor cameras or Super 35, I highly recommend that lens to start off for any kind of video work or also photo work. Okay, now the other image that he sent me is his edit down here. So at the end, we can do a comparison between the original uh, Mariano's edit and then finally mine. Now his edit, I kind of like it. It's a very contrasty and moody feel to it. And we can see that nice contrast that he's added. He's basically desaturated all the greens and all the yellows. And then he has that bluish tone in the mountains in the background. So very nice edit from Mariano. Now Mariano also sent me his Instagram. If you want to check it out, he's over here, which has a very nice vibe to it. He's very consistent with his editing. So props to him. And also he sent me his portfolio online, which is his online page. And here we have it with beautiful travel photos. Very nice set. Now the photo that Mariano sent is a nice challenge just because I've never shot or edited car photography. So it's going to be interesting and in how I go with it. Now. Having said that, I do want to shoot some cars in the future. I do have some styles like Aaron Brimhoff style in the bucket list of the Edelag series. But first of all, I have to shoot some sports cars or some actions in motorbikes or anything like that. Now in my city, in my environment, there's not much going on. It's a very small city, so there's not even a sports car uh, just rolling around. Uh, everyone would know if someone had a sports car or even a Porsche or anything as basic as that. So let's jump into Instagram. Let's check out some styles. Uh, for example, Aaron Brimholz, which is uh, a style that I really like. He's very eccentric. He's very dramatic. He's not afraid to go heavy with the edits. For example, here, completely desaturated and everything blue, then everything very sepia. He's very dramatic in his style, which is fantastic. And he's very adept in capturing movement in particular. Look at all the action in his photos. So fantastic shots, of course. Look at this with a telephoto. Everything is completely desaturated, minus the rider and the bike. Just fantastic action shots in general. Now he likes to basically go ham with the editing. For example, here, desaturation, everything completely, minus the light on the yellows on the Porsche. It's just fantastic, his style. I, I really admire his photography. Maybe someday, if I have the opportunity of shooting a rider or a sports car, um, I'll do a video editing like Aaron Brimhall. Now, another style which is a bit different is this one from Christian Arlord, which is an Oslo based photographer. And here we can see that his style is a lot more minimalistic for his car photography. He basically does have some high contrast in his images, but he likes to leave the car in a minimalistic space. So all the attention goes into the car with nice sunset light. Now, another feed, which isn't a photographer in particular, it's just a very curated feed, which is the Pole Stars uh, feed over here, which is Volvo's electric side and here we can see that the feed is very curated and beautiful photography he go they go from a very wide minimalistic shot into some details and everything is with a lot of aesthetic well their cars are very aesthetic but also their feel so this is another inspiration for car photography as you can see there are different styles that i really like for car photography okay now in lightroom we have the image and the first thing that i want to do with this one is really isolate the car now as we can see it really stands out because of the color 
but if it were in a more natural color, it wouldn't really stand out just because this image is shot at f9. Now by shooting an f9 or stopping down the aperture, what you're doing is expanding the plane of focus. Therefore, we can see that the car is completely sharp in focus, very nice, but also the background is completely in focus as well, even the mountain. So everything is in focus in this image and makes it look very flat and therefore, well, the car is basically integrating with the background. Now, I really recommend you to stop down, stop, stop up the aperture all the way down to maybe 2.8 or f4. So the subject is more isolated from the background. So that's one thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to isolate the subject, which is the car and blur out the background and also add some clarity to the car to make it really pop. Now, another thing that I want to do is really make this vegetation a bit more vivid because it's very dull. It's normal. It's the Mediterranean. There are olive trees. They should be dull, but I want them to be a bit more rich. And also, I don't like the blues in the mountains in the back. So let's start editing this photo. Now, first of all, just going to select the auto masking tool over here, select masking and select subject. And immediately Lightroom selects our subject. Now, if you want an in-depth tutorial on the auto masking tools, which is a new feature in Lightroom, you can check out the link to the video up here in the cards in case you want to check it out and dominate that tool. Okay, now we've selected the subject and as we can see, this tree in the background is really competing with the car in general just because it's very centered and it's very dark. So what I want to do is blur everything out. For that, I'm just going to invert the selection, select subject or the mask or the layer over here and select invert. And I've selected everything but the car, but the selection isn't quite perfect. So I'm just going to refine the edit. So I'm just going to zoom in as we can see, for example, over here, the headlights and there's a bit of red over here. We can also see in the ceiling bars over here and we can see that some sports have been missed and also the back. So what I'm going to do is select add, select the brush and I'm going to add these parts over here under the car to the mask. Don't have to be too precise and select subtract brush once again. I'm just going to delete any extra that I don't want to select with the mask. Okay, now I'm just gonna select the mask once again. And what I'm gonna do is in sharpness, reduce it to the negatives. And as we can see, if we go to the minus 100, everything starts to blur out. And now it's looking like if we shot maybe an, an F 5.6 or something like that, but it's not very real just because everything is completely blurred out minus the car. Now I want to really make this a bit more natural. So what I'm gonna do is select subtract once again, and now I'm gonna select the radial gradient. Now I'm just gonna draw out a circle. And as you can see, everything that's inside the circle is eliminating that negative sharpness that we added. So I'm just going to select it over here and just mimic or try to replicate what depth of field would be a straight line down here with everything in this same plane in focus. So what I'm going to do is just expand it and make sure I really center. And yeah, now we have that fake depth of field. So now the car is looking quite isolated. Next up, what I'm going to do is once again, create a new auto mask, selecting the subject. And now I'm going to add some clarity to make it pop. Now, I don't want to go all the way to too extreme because, well, it looks very unnatural and strange noise starts to appear. So I'm just going to add it ever so slightly, something like that to make it pop. And then I really don't like the blue color, guys. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't really like blue colors or vibrant colors in cars. I like more white, silvers, blacks and grays. And now, if this was a shot or photo shoot for Audi, I wouldn't touch the color because they take a lot of time into making the pantones for each color and they even name them in very strange names, for example, Glacier, Arctic, Blue or something like that. And they wouldn't be very happy if I altered the color that they spend so much time and so much money in. But in this case, this isn't an Audi photo shoot. I'm just going to alter the color to my liking. So I'm going to desaturate this image, desaturate the blues. This is a very nice color, but I won't go that far. I'm just going to add a bit of silver to it, a bit of blue like in Glacier Arctic or something like that. Hit enter, I'm much more happy with this color. Okay, talking about highlights, I'm just gonna zoom in into the headlights over here. And the headlights, what I want to do is really make the LED lights really pop a lot more. So for that, once again, I'm gonna select the masking tool. And I'm gonna create a brush tool over here. I'm just gonna quickly color all the lights that we see. Once selected everything that we want, I'm going to add some negative dehaze. And as you can see, it really adds this glow to the headlights, not too much. He's going to add it over here around the minus 25. And then the whites are just going to pull them up to make them really pop. Pull down the blacks to retain that contrast. And there we have it. Hit enter. And now it's really contrasting from the background. 
Okay, next up, I'm gonna go with my edit. So I'm gonna start off by bringing down a bit of the exposure just to make this image a lot more dark and it's looking quite nice. Next up, I'm gonna add another mask and in this case, it's just gonna be a linear filter over here at the top, just to bring back a lot of information from the sky. Just gonna pull it down, get a bit smaller, something like that. And then we're gonna pull down the exposure, pull down the highlights and pull down the whites. And then just gonna reduce a bit of the saturation so I'm losing those blues that we have in the mountain. And I'm liking what I'm seeing. Next up, let's go with the color grading part. First of all, I'm just gonna reduce a bit of the exposure to make this image look like if it was shot in a bit of a sunset, really making those headlights pop, just like that. And next, what I'm going to do is create an S-curve. But in this case, in the tone curve, I'm not gonna create an S-curve for contrast, which would be pulling down the shadows and pulling up the highlights just like that to, look, to have a lot more contrast. I'm gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna create a point in the shadows, pull it up over the diagonal, and the highlights just pull it down over the diagonal to make the image a lot more flat. And that really makes the car where we added some clarity really start to pop up a lot more. Next, I'm gonna go down. And in saturation, maybe I want to desaturate a bit of the blues once again uh, from the mountains, not too much because I'm also affecting the car. So I'm gonna go all the way up. So I'm gonna go to the mask again and correct the mask that we added for the car, bringing back a bit of the saturation and then go all the way down to camera calibration. And in camera calibration, I want to make those greens a bit more vibrant. So I'm gonna add a positive saturation to the reds, which control, as you can see, a bit of the vibrancy of the greens, a bit of saturation on the greens, and also a bit of saturation on the blues. And now we can see that the greens have a bit more vibrance to them. The greens down, and also the reds towards the warmish tones, just like that. And now the image is a bit more vibrant and a bit more vivid. Okay, finally, maybe I'm gonna draw down a bit of the temperature to make it a bit colder like that. And finally, I'm gonna crop it to a 21 by nine aspect ratio, which is a very nice ratio that we that I really like, a very cinematic one, and then just pull it down, give it a bit of space at the bottom. So we can see the before and after with Alt and Y on our keyboard. This is the before and this is the after, and I'm really making this image a lot more flat, isolating the subject, which is the Q3, and also just making the greens a bit more vibrant. Okay, so this would be the edit, but I'm not quite finished. I think I want to add some anamorphic flares in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is right click, edit in, edit in Photoshop, and then Lightroom will automatically open Photoshop with the image already loaded. So once Photoshop opens, it has our original image. And as we can see, it's the raw file. In previous generations or previous uh, updates, it opened it up as a TIFF or a PNG file, which wasn't ideal because it loses quality when you open up or export it as another type of file. In this case, it's the raw file, so it, that's perfect. Now, what I want to do is overlay this anamorphic lens filter over here. So I'm just gonna put it over our image, hit yes. This one, I just found it on Google. <laughs> Look at the resolution, it's, min it's very minuscule. So I'm just gonna make it bigger with Control T to transform. Just gonna make it a lot bigger, maybe a bit wider as well. And then I'm just gonna select the layer blending modes to find one that really matches the scene. So I'm just gonna select this one. I'm sorry that my Photoshop is in Spanish. I didn't have time to reinstall it in English. So it's basically the same, it's the same things, guys. So I'm just gonna put this one over the lights, just like that. Maybe change the opacity just a bit down. And maybe I will desaturate this one just a bit. Just pull down the saturation and select this little box, which will only make the layer affect the immediate below one. Hit enter. And there we have it. Now I'm gonna save it, Control S or Command S. And then in Lightroom, automatically we can see that the image that we just edited is gonna appear in Lightroom. So this is our final edit, guys. This is the before and after. So this is the original image. Then we have Mariano edits over here, very contrasty and punchy style. And finally we have mine, which is a more flat looking style, a very desaturated style. And we added that anamorphic lens flare in Photoshop. So what do you think of my edit guys? I think it was a bit challenging for me at the start, but the results are quite nice in general. Now remember, I'm not saying that my edit is better than Mariano's, just two different interpretations of the same photograph. So Mariano, very nice style, very nice feed. Remember to go and support him. Thank you for submitting that photo. And if you wanna participate in this dynamic, guys, go to my original channel, Tony Fuentes, the Spanish version, and select the channel membership, level two or superior, so you get access to the email address where 
you can submit all your photos to edit. Now in the future, if and when I meet the requirements to apply for the YouTube program, I will add the channel membership to this channel as well. So you don't have to jump into the other one to apply for these types of features. So that's gonna be it for today, guys. If you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It actually makes a difference. Comment down below any video that you want me to make. Subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.